Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit and Cross Stitch Floss Tube hack slash Floss Tube podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy's Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Thursday, the 26th of September, 2019, and this is episode 363, in which Cece has had a stupid day having to talk on the phone. Why is the phone still a thing? I hate talking on the phone. Okay, my rant is over. We'd like to say a big welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers and a big hi to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot, even though I ranted at you. Uh, we hope you enjoy the show. Um, Dammy, if someone is not a member of our Ravelry group, what should they do and why? You should join and introduce yourself in our introduction thread because you'll get a shout out on our next episode and be able to participate in all our alongs and giveaways. That's right. Well, we have quite a bit to talk to you about today. It feels like we got 57 Etsy orders in, or maybe that was just me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm going to show you stuff because it's fun. Um, and we got lots of projects, and we have a good Ask the Geeky Girls question about nose rings. Um, so we probably should get started. Here we go. Now we're going to talk about what is on our needles. What's on your needles, Danny? So I'm, st <laughs> I'm still working on my Persephone wrap. I, I haven't gone backwards, so I still finished one repeat. But yeah, I'm liking the way it looks. I just need to knit it all up now. Yes, in all your spare time. Yeah, it's on US 6's 4mm needles, and the yarn is Wild Happy Color Authentic Base in the Dammy's News colorway. So, what if you just like made yourself a goal of like knitting on it for 15 minutes a day or something like that? It would still be done later than I would like. But at least you know that you're making progress on it. Yeah. Versus like just being so overwhelmed with wanting that with all the work that needs to be done on it that you that you don't end up doing any or just doing very little. Yeah. Just a thought. Just a thought. I'm gonna do this. Did you get a knot? I hope not. <laughs> Anyway, that's all that's on my needles. What's on your needles? Okay, well, I'm still working on your birthday socks because you're turning 20 in, um, I don't know how many days. You sure? Mm. I'm positive. You are turning 20 <laughs> on the 13th. Today's the 26th. Are there 30 days in September? Uh-huh. So in 17 days. You're turning 20. Whoa. Yes. So I'm using my uh, French Vanilla Cappuccino Sock Pattern, which you can get on Ravelry. So they're on US 1.5, 2.5 mil needles, and the yarn, which will be very familiar if you've been watching for a while, because it is the yarn that I get her birthday wrap last year. She didn't get a wrap this year. I was like, oh, no, because I was so late <laughs> getting it done last year. <sighs> Bad mama. Uh, I did finish it finally, though. And you do use it, just not right now. I do. It, when it's cooler. Um, this is Knit Pick Stroll hand painted in the Borealis mm. colorway. So here is the first sock and it's finished. So that's pretty true colors. It's purple and black and a, like a turquoisey <laughs> teal. And then here's the second sock. I am ready to put the heel in. So I'm wanting to get this mm. these done because when the Dr. Hubs and I are going to mm. Vancouver, Canada next weekend. Mm. So not like two days from now, but a week, um, to go to Knit City and have just a lovely 22nd right. anniversary slash 42nd birthday fun trip. So, um, so that, so I want to finish them by then because I want to take, uh, my bestie Katie's birthday socks to knit on, um, as well as I'm planning to take my Nanny Swemo, um, yarn dammy's winding up a, um, a skein of each of the four colors and i'm doing the strange brew pattern by tin can knits but i'm sticking it to make it a cardigan and um so i'm going to do some swatching uh to try to figure out what kind of yoke pattern i want because it's more of a recipe of making your own yoke so it gives you like the basic 
for uh, doing it top down or bottom up from sizes baby to like, I think it's men's 3X or 4XL. Um, but I just need to figure out because when I bought the yarn, I was planning to do a different pattern and I'm not going to be doing that now. Um, so I just need to figure out what I'm going to do so that I make sure I have enough of yarn of each of the colors mm -hmm. to do it. So I'm planning to take that with me as well in the car because it's about a four hour trip to get to Vancouver. So um, we'll see what happens. Mm. Does that sunshine smell good? Mmm, delicious sun. You'll see um, after the credits, Dammy took some video of Pinky laying in the sun. Okay, so I'm working on that, and then I'm also working on my Inner Peace Shawl, which is a pattern by Hohi Locatelli for the Hohi Fall Cal 2019. Yeah. Yes, okay. You Damn it. write this in your project notes. I should. And I, it's in my project notes. It's not in our spreadsheet. Not spreadsheet. Google Doc for our show notes. So I am... Um, so she's doing a fall cowl of any of her patterns from September to November. So I'm knitting this shawl. Um, I'm on US 4 3.5 mil needles and I'm using Pandia's Jewel Snug in the Supernatural colorway and Suburban Stitcher Sock in the Hawaii Volcanoes National Park colorway. So this was originally designed just for one color but I wanted to use two because I didn't have 150 grams of any fingering. So I've actually finished the four of the 12 sections. And look at those baubles. So this the the more purpley one is the suburban stitcher and the more the lighter one is pendius jewel so this is one section and then this is two and three and four so i just finished four yesterday so i'm working on that and i think it's going to block out beautifully i think it's really going to open up and um and grow when i soak and block it later and then let me show you my English paper piecing. So I did finish the one I showed you last week. I think I only had like one hexagon to go in it. And I've already put it away in its box down underneath the coffee table. But I'm doing this one. So I typically, so all my flowers thus far have the gray middle and then the lavender top and bottom. And then I've just been using one fabric on the inside and one on the outside. And then when I do the other flower I use the one that was on the outside as the inside and one that was on the inside as the outside. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. Well these four fabrics and some other ones in my bag of fabrics I didn't have enough of them to do that so I paired them up together. So I paired up the pandas which is on the red and the cats which is on the gold with this black and white is it called herringbone? Mm -hmm. uh, and the owl. So the oh, owl no, that I think that one's houndstooth. Houndstooth, I think that's right. So the owls, the cats, and the pandas are all kind of the same designer that did them. So I did this, and then on the other one, it'll have the kitties and the pandas on the outside, and the owls and the houndstooth on the inside. I think this might be my favorite so far. I really like using lots of different fabrics on it. So um, I am working on that. And that is everything that I'm working on until we get to floss tube. But I finished something, so let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about her finished project. I really like this one. It's so cute. So this is my preemie hat for the week. This is my th number 38 for the year. Um, it's my free top-down preemie hat pattern that you can get on Ravelry. Um, I use US 6's 4 mil needles. And this, the pom-pom and the yellow stripe here is Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted in the Creme Brulee colorway. Creme brulee. It's left over from the stole that I knit for the Dr. Hubs. Um, and then I held together a strand of Sun Soap Sister Everything Earth. I held the, a strand of the rust and a strand of the green together to do the rest of the hat. Mm -hmm. I think it turned out really cute. That's the only thing that I finished this week. Wow. So I think we're ready to move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Floss Tube. You don't have to sing it. I don't know. I don't know a better intro. Now it's time for Floss Tube. 
Okay, Dammy, what are you stitching on this week? I'm still working on the thing I showed last week. Here's it okay. says every day is an adventure. Yeah, you have to be careful when you hold up patterns like that because if you hold them up for too long, people can try to steal them. I know, that's why I just did. Okay. It's a bike. It says every day is an adventure. And I've got like the main body of the bicycle. Hold it closer. The main body of the bicycle done and a wheel and a half. Is that a pedal right there? Mm hmm or like, yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Cool. Are you enjoying it? Mm -hmm. I made a cross stitcher. Okay, let me talk about what I'm doing. Did you hear that? Was that her? <laughs> that was one of our upstairs neighbor's cats. I think that's their second cat. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So as I talked about last week, I am participating now in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature. So last week, hold on, let me open my little thing here. So last week, um, the first task I completed was stitching on a project that caused me mental stress uh, because it was easier or harder than expected or whatever. So I chose to stitch... Um, 200 stitches on my Quaker pumpkin by the stitcher hood and I changed the color I talked about that last or a, few, a couple weeks ago I think and so here is where I'm at right now so I'm into the third row of the motifs out of five and we went to a craft store over the weekend, and I got a really uh, pretty, um, it's an unfinished pumpkin, like wall hanging, um, that I'm going to paint. I don't know what color yet. And then mount this on. So I'm excited about that. So I got 200 stitches in on this because this was the first time I've stitched two over two. So that means using two strands of floss over two. Um, so in traditional cross stitch, what Dammy's doing, um, it's done with, usually two strands of floss, but over one. So there's just four holes and you're making an X. With fabric like this, which is 28 count, mushroom is the color and it's an even weave. There, I'm using essentially nine holes. So nine, not eight? No, nine to make a square. Three, three, three. So you're going from the upper corner oh. to the bottom corner and across. So the middle, top and bottom squares aren't used and the side middle squares aren't used. That's I don't know if I'm making sense, but I'm loving how stuff. So I did 200 stitches on that uh, because I had to reorientate my brain to use nine holes instead of two. I also used this for the second task, which were, was for potions and I needed a project that featured something I could relate to wormwood. Well, so I said, well, wormwood is a plant and a pumpkin is a plant. So I did 200 more stitches on this. And then for the third uh, task, which is another one for potions. I can't find myself here. I started a new project because I needed to do 200 stitches that contained silver or gray. And I didn't have a project going that had that, so I did this. Now, you're going to see there's a ton of project, product, progress on this because I'm using it for this week as well. So the pattern I'm using is uh, Little Cat's Halloween, designed by Doreen Jones, and it is from the Just Cross Stitch Halloween 2019 issue. So this, this is what it looks like. And so I'm stitching this on 14 count Ada that I had left over. So I got in my 200 silver or gray stitches um, and then I did I was not able to finish tasks four or five last week for this week we are doing quidditch tryouts which tryouts so um, I completed the bonus first mm -hmm. which was finding someone participating in school of magical stitches and literature who was either stitching the same project or you, as you or a project by the same designer as you. Mm -hmm. So I found a lovely lady and we were both stitching on uh, Doreen Jones patterns. So I put in 200 stitches on this for that. And now 
Hello, Pinky. I need to come up here with everything you have. See? What? See? There's like I'm I did very, things on my couch. I'm very helpful. You're being helpful, love. I put my hair over all your crap. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I don't know if you heard him the other night that Dr. Hubbs was trying on a, a new piece of... Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm not going to walk on it. She's trying to I know. No, thank you. No, thank you. Okay. Um, <laughs> the Dr. Hubbs was trying on a new piece of clothing that I'd ordered for him from the Amazon. Because, hello, Amazon. Um, and he was like, oh, no. And I was like, oh, crap. They don't fit or something. And he was like, I was like, what? He was like, it already has pink hair on it. <laughs> okay. So, um, so with Quidditch tryouts, so beyond the bonus, there's four different things because there's four positions on the Quidditch team. So each of the four positions has a, a task associated with it. And for the position you want the most, you're supposed to do 500 stitches on a project for the the position you want second most you do 400 and for the position you want third or fourth you do 200 stitches on so i am attempting to do 500 stitches on this um for the keeper position which is stitching something with rings in the design so i'm counting as rings the fact that hello the pumpkin is like a ring uh but there's also rings of the vine and her eyes are also rings so I'm working on this. I'm currently sitting at, one hundred and ninety-two stitches. After I did the two hundred stitches for the bonus. So um, yeah, so I'm working on the pumpkin right now. So I'm hoping to get five hundred stitches in on this, and then I will go back to working on my Quaker pumpkin. And that's going to be for the seeker position um, because you need to stitch your most sought out pattern or the pattern that was most difficult to come by. So um, they say, you know, they said you could use one that you like saw and you knew immediately you had to have, which was the Quaker pumpkin for me. When I saw it on a floss tube, I was like, oh my gosh, I must, must have that. And I ordered it and got it. So I will be planning to hopefully put in 400 stitches on this we shall see how that goes so that is what i'm working on uh, and then there's also tasks for the beater position and the chaser position i don't know if i'm going to get to those this week the one of the really nice things though about magical stitches is we don't lose points if we don't do a task you only gain points does that make sense mm -hmm. Um, plus, I'm earning a lot of points doing the literature portion of it, so um, which I'm loving. So that is exciting for that. So that is what I'm working on. And then the floss tubes that I've been binging, I caught up with the Cupcake Stitcher. Um, and I am currently binging So Grateful. Um, and those are linked in the show notes, as well as the patterns are linked um, and the School of Magical Stitches and Literature is linked. Um, oh, I didn't put this in here, but, um, so we have been having a stitching group meeting on Monday nights for the last few weeks, um, here in Kitsap County, which is in Washington. So, uh, we're meeting in Silverdale, and we had been just communicating through the Pacific Northwest Stitchers group on Facebook, but this week we created our own group and it's called Kitsap, Kitsap Cross Stitchers. So if you're local and would like to join that, it's on Facebook. Just search for Kitsap Cross Stitchers and you can join. There's some questions to answer, very easy questions, uh, just to make sure that you're actually a cross stitcher and not a spam person. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I did get some things that are part of my stitching stuff as um, yummies this week. So let's move on to the next segment so we can talk to you about those yummies. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show, yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. 
I thought I got out the first one and I didn't. No, no, no here it is. No. Did I keep one of her business cards is the question. Hold on. Hold that thought, folks. Mm. I'm being very unorganized today. Yes, I did. I kept it. Okay. So this is from all of these things that we're about to talk about are from Etsy. Because Etsy. Um, so this first thing is from the Pudgy Corgi Crochet Shop. Nobody told me there was going to be a corgi. <laughs> and this is a collapsible thread catcher. Candy okay. Trash. You ready? Can I use it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I pop the bottom out. I twist it. And it makes a little trash can. And then you put little bits of floss like this. Or fabric. I've got fabric in there. Or yarn. And then when you're done and ready to leave, like if you're at knitting group or stitching group, you just twist it closed, pop it in there, and everything stays inside until you empty it. Yay. I got the, um, there, were, there wasn't a pink fabric that she had ready made that I liked, um, so I chose the Nebula. Nebula. Because I like science fiction. And it has some pink in it. So, so yeah. These are really cool, affordable, and uh, better than just having like a pile of floss or fabric or whatever knock off the table and that I knock again. off the table or the couch, ending up with a pile of fuzz because I trimmed the pom pom and, and then, then it tries to eat it, and then it's hard to get off up off the couch. So we did that. And then I did you that. Die. Okay. The next thing. Hold on, I'm missing something. What you missing? I'm missing the extra one of these that she made. It was probably on your desk where it fell. You can look for it later. You can show it on your phone. Yes, I'll show it on my phone. It's weird. I thought I brought it over here. I brought this stuff over here. Okay, I don't know. Okay, phone. Where's my phone? Okay, so I ordered um, from Anthem... Anthem Sticker Company on Etsy. I was looking for a sticker to go on my phone, on like the little wallet portion. So I got this one that says drink coffee like a Gilmore. And she actually sent me two of them. Plus she also sent me this Kindness Matters one. Put it on our car. That, that way people don't honk at us. <laughs> um... And she was able to custom make the size for me because the listing she had, it was too big. And so I had sent her a message and said, is there any way you could make it to fit this size? And she did. So it's awesome. So there's that. All these are linked in the show notes, as I said. Um, okay. That, this is this one. Okay. I guess everyone's on a business card with this one. Um, this is from Party Girl Design on Etsy. All these are linked. came with the little, the little we're also Hufflepuffs. No, that's this one. Oh. Never mind. Um, because I am in, I am a Hufflepuff, and I'm in the Hufflepuff um, team. Team. Group. Group. What is it called in the movies, in the books? House. House. Oh, I'm earning house points, y'all. Brain. Um, because I'm in the Hufflepuff house for School of Magical Stitches and Literature, I wanted some Hufflepuff stickers for my Bujo where I'm keeping track of stuff. So I ordered these from um, the Party, Girl, Party Girls design on Etsy. So there's, I'm not going to read them all to you, but there's all different kinds of them on there. And then also from Lalo design company on Etsy. I ordered these ones. And there was a little delay in her shipping the order. So they sent me this personalized, I'm not gonna hold it close enough for you to read, but they sent me this personalized note with, did you see that it's Hogwarts mm -hmm. in the background? I'll cover up the text. Isn't that pretty? Um, and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but no, not very well. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, a decal of a badger with a the scarf, and it says Hufflepuff. I might. 
Do you think, um, how annoyed will Daddy get with me having... He'll be like, oh, another yeah. sticker on there? Okay. Because right now we have a yarn ball, a pink yarn ball with needles in it, and we have a honorary Gilmore Girl, uh, it says honorary Gilmore Girl with a coffee cup from Luke's on the car. Yep. Yes. Um, okay, and then the last thing from Etsy, which... Mm -hmm. We were so confused. So, um, we use the informed delivery service that the post office offers, um, where it like scans your like first class mail and it also puts tracking numbers in so you can check it and, and trick it all in one place. So there was this tracking number that came up in there and I was like, Dammy, this must be the thing you ordered on Etsy. And she was like, no, it's coming from Bristol. And I was like, well, this is coming, like, from California. I was like, and I went in and looked at my Etsy. I was like, I've gotten everything I ordered. I don't know what this is, Dammy. And she brought it in. The, it, it, it said it was delivered today. And so Dammy went and got it and brought it in. And she was like, it says it's for you. And I was like, I don't know what this is. Um, so I opened it. And it is a parcel from the Wool in Wood Market on Etsy. Her name is Bree Prophet. And there was a card in it, beautiful card, that's probably going on my wall because it's so gorgeous with the sunflowers and the autumn colors. And it was a note from my bestie Katie and her husband and uh, boys in England sending me a birthday present. And oh. yeah, so Brie of Wool and Wood uh, went to college with Katie. Which is where I go. Yes. Um, and so it was, um, she's, uh, Katie had told me that, um, when I talked to her after this oh, arrived, no. that, um, that when Brie opened her shop, that Katie was like, okay, I know what we're sending Cece for her birthday. Mm -hmm. So they sent me these earrings that are felt balls. This one is kind of a tank. They look like pom pom. They do. Uh, like felted pom poms. It looks like. Two thirds of Neapolitan ice cream. <laughs> kind of does. So there's a wooden bead top and bottom, and then there's this brown um, ball, and then a pink ball. Neapolitan. And then they, she also sent. Oh, no. It's a wooden bookmark, but with the this lets you see kind of what the balls look like. Uh, so with the beads and with a darker pink. So I was like, oh my gosh, that is so sweet. Uh, and I, you know, immediately sent a message to Katie and was, I told her the whole story and she laughed. So, um, so yeah, so that was fun to get something from my bestie. My birthday is not until next week, actually the fourth, but, um, she wanted to make sure I would have it in time for my birthday. And so I put them on after they got here today and was like, I'm going to wear my new earrings. I probably will wear them in Vancouver next weekend too, because I love them. Okay, Dammy, do you have any yummies you would like to talk about since I've just talked about everything on Etsy? No. No yummies? You go back to school this week? Yeah. I mean, on Sunday? You go back to school? Yeah. You excited? Yeah. You're working on getting all your stuff packed up? Yeah. Because you're working full-time still this week. Yeah. She works all the way through Saturday, and then we take her to school on Sunday. Yeah. So, um... But, do you guys want exciting news? Dammy and I will be recording the podcast in person. Uh... This year. So, without giving too many details, the Dr. Hubs has a new job. As of today, he's at his job, new job right now. And it is in Seattle, so we're planning to still live over here in Bremerton, um, and he's commuting. So one day a week, I'm going to be commuting with him, and I will take the public transit up to Dammy School, and we will record the podcast together. And um, so, however, this is not happening for the next two weeks, um, because... We'll announce this now and then at the end again. Yes, I'll, yeah, that's a good idea. So n next week... Dammy is coming home on Friday the 4th, which is my birthday. Um, 
because she is going to be here with Pink Pearl while the Dr. Hubs and I are in Vancouver. So when she gets home, we are going to do a mini episode. We're not going to do a full, whole full-blown episode. Probably what we will do is just talk about what we're working on, what we finished, and maybe some yummies. Mm -hmm. um, because I need to get it posted Friday by Friday night because the Dr. Hubs and I are leaving at a, probably around 5 a.m. Ew. Yeah. I will not be getting it. So I will come give you a kiss on your head. And then I'll wake up and not be able to go back to sleep. Oh, I hope not. Um, we, st we haven't set that in stone yet of what time we're leaving. We're just trying to make sure we have the most time possible while we're in Vancouver. Um, so because of that, I just don't have enough time to, we don't have enough time to record a full episode for me to edit a full episode and everything. So we're just going to do a mini episode next week on my birthday. And then the following Friday, Dammy's coming home for her birthday weekend because her birthday is on that Sunday, the 13th. So when she gets home on the Friday, we will record a full episode. You'll hear all about Vancouver, and uh, we will upload that. So from for for at least this quarter of school, we need to record on Fridays, and the podcasts go live on Saturdays. Versus we are right now recording on Thursdays with the episodes going going live on Fridays. So thanks for understanding. Thanks for working with us, and we're so excited. We're going to be able to record in person. Because it's going to make editing so much easier on me because there's not going to be the technology issues we faced last year with uh, doing it over uh, video conferencing software. Yep. Yay, exciting. Okay, let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is it, Dammy? It stands for... You can't get the whole... It stands for Geeky Girls Knit Crafty Photo a Day Challenge. We have a list of photo prompts for each month, so you take a look at the prompt for that day. Take a picture related to it and post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. That's right. So September, the prompts have been about like back to school and fall coming and mm -hmm. such like that. Mm -hmm. um, and we've now released the October prompts and it is all about, you know, Halloween and fall okay. and celebration because Dammy and I both have birthday. Here's the drink like a Gilmore. Do you have you like a built Gilmore sticker? It got tucked under my leg. I knew it was over here. Um, yes, so just like all things like that. And I double-checked to make sure that all of the prompts will work for cross-stitchers as well. It actually will work for really any type of crafter. So if you, whatever type of crafter you are or if you're multi-craftual, join in on the fun. And your, your picture doesn't have to be something craft-related. There are some prompts with, you know, like whip, like work in progress and such like that, that obviously is craft related usually. Uh, although. I mean, we're all works in progress. Yes. And there was somebody, I, I don't know, this is, I think this has probably been years ago now mm -hmm. when we had, because we use whip probably almost monthly uh, as a prompt and they posted, she was pregnant. She posted it like work in progress mm -hmm. because the baby was the work in progress. So, um, yeah. So October prompts are out. They're on our website, on our blog, geekygirlsknit.com. Um, and also, if this is your first time participating and you are interested, if um, if you go to that blog post on our website, there is a link to the Google Calendar we created for the prompts. And you can go to that. You can click the link, and it will take you to the calendar. And you can add it to your own calendar so that the prompts will show up on your Google Calendar. And that way you have access to them very easily when you look at your calendar every day. So, okay, Dammy, what are we about to show them? Two photos from us that we liked and five photos from other people that we liked. Here come the photos. I have pink hair in your socks. Good. I want to always. Um, it, it's 
kitty pink hair as well as mama pink hair. Yeah. Those were our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. It's never too late to join in. Just take a look at the prompt for the day. So, for example, Thursday today when we're recording this, the prompt is crafty selfie. You interpret that however you wish. I'm probably going to take a picture with my earrings because they were craftily made and it's a selfie of me. Mm -hmm. That's probably what I'm going to do. Um, and then you post it on Instagram. Make sure in your caption you use hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. You can also use all these other prompts that have, or these hashtags that have come along, including GGK Stitchy Pad, GGK Kitty Pad, GGK Puggy Pad, GGK Puppy Pad, GGK Birdie Pad. Did I get them all? Uh, sure. If you want to start another one, let us know and we will plug it on the on the podcast. Um, and yours might get chosen. Um, if you have a private account on Instagram, you need to make sure that Dammy, Dammy's Doodles, is following you because otherwise we can't see your photos. So send her a message, she'll follow you, and then we'll be able to see your photos. It's true. And it is true. Okay, upcoming events. This is coming up. But we're not attending because we'll be in Vancouver. So the Fall Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl is next weekend, the 4th, 5th, and 6th. And I've put a link in the show notes um, where you can get all the information. And yeah, so if we were not going to Vancouver, I would be doing this. But since we're going to Knit City in Vancouver, the first weekend in October... I am not doing Pacific Northwest Yarn Crawl. So that'll be, I'll be there. So the plan is to be at Knit City on Saturday. And I'm planning to be there probably most of the day. Uh, it depends on what time we arrive in to Vancouver. But the plan is to be there most of the day. So um, I'm really not going to be doing a ton, a ton of shopping. I might do a lot of window shopping. Although I do want to try to get, find yarn for those mitts that I want to make for you and I. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to need to find mini skeins in the right colors. Um, and then a main color. So that might be what I shop for. Um, which doesn't mean that those mitts are going to happen anytime soon. But I will have the yarn when I'm ready. Um, okay. And then the third weekend in October is Fiber Fusion Northwest at Evergreen State Fairgrounds in Monroe, Washington. I plan to go on the Saturday uh, to meet Ann Tudor, who does glass stitch markers. I was like, do I have any over here? I don't think I do. I have. Do you have one handy? Well, one definitely fell off my needles, but. Oh, yes. The little sheep. Purple. Purple sheep. She has um, Halloween and fall stuff. Uh, stitch markers available on her site right now. So she's going to be in one of the booths at Fiber Fusion Northwest. So uh, I'm planning to meet her and visit there. And then the last weekend in October, I'll be going to the Seattle Cat Convention, See Meow Con, um, on the Saturday. Mm -hmm. If Dammy's not in rehearsals, hopefully she'll be able to join us. We shall see. We didn't buy a pre-ticket for you because we weren't yeah, sure. No. So... You can buy them at the door. Yeah, I can use team ticks. I doubt it. <laughs> and then on Saturday the 9th of November, I'm going to a knitting retreat that is full. And there's a waiting list for. So uh, it's put on by um, Allen Yarn Shop, which is one of our local yarn shops. And then on the Sunday after that, the 10th of November, um, I'm going to be going to Yarn Revolution over in Seattle. It's being put on by Nano... Nano Stitch Lab. St yeah, Nano Stitch Lab, who did the yarn for my Nanny Swimmer sweater last year. So um, that should be fun. So there's all kinds of fun happening. It's going to be crazy around here, but we're going to do our best to get, our, get them all done. And uh, I can't wait to meet some of y'all uh, in person if you're going to be at any of those events. Look for me. Please don't be shy. I'm just me. I, and I like hugs. And I will give hugs. If you don't want hugs, I won't give hugs. Um, but I would love to see you and meet you, um, and put a face sometimes to the Ravatar or the Ravelry name or the Instagram name. Um, so yeah, so come say hi if you are at any of the events and you see me or Dammy, because she'll be at hopefully at least one of those. We'll mm. see. All right, let's move on to the next segment.
now we're going to talk about what we are reading, watching, and listening to. What are we read? What are you reading? So I'm, I'm still making my way through slowly the Secret Diaries of Miss Anne Lister, the first volume. Yeah, and the Glass Scientists, which is a web comic by Sabrina Kajengo. But next week at this time, you'll be reading school books. Do you have all your books? Did you order them all? Yeah, I need to pick up the rest from the bookstore. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, so I assume you're getting your 15 minutes of reading in. Yes. What am I referring to? The July, August, September read-along. Wow. So this is a challenge for you to read 15 minutes a day every day. I don't care what you read as long as you're reading. Um, audiobooks do count. Um, and there is a finish line thread in our Ravelry group where you post uh, all the details are in the Ravelry group and on our website. We're also doing a yearly challenge where you earn entries by participating in the seasonal rolls, and we will be giving away three grand prizes at the beginning of 2020. It's not too late to jump in. Um, this season's this uh, yeah this season's is about to end here in just a four days, but then you could jump right into the final season, October, November, December, and earn some entries into the. Uh, to the, to the year long, and there is a way also to earn some bonus points. So check everything out. Let us know if you have any questions. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I am reading. I am almost done, actually. I should be done with this by the time we record next week. Oh, we're not talking about reading next week. No. I will definitely be done with it by the time we talk about reading again. Uh, white Fragility, Why It's So Hard to Talk to White People About Racism by Robin D'Angelo. It's been very interesting eye-opening also though tough some in some parts to to read so um yeah and then i'm also reading another nonfiction book called god land a story of faith loss and renewal in middle america by liz leans is that how you would say that i would say liz lens okay um so there's two main premises to the book. One part of it is she's looking at um, how churches are disappearing in like the um, Midwest kind of region um, and looking at like rural churches and such like that. But then she's also bringing in her own story of um, what has happened in her faith journey and marriage and family, um, especially um, post last election, last presidential election. So um, it's it's been a really interesting read. Um, so, yeah. Um, okay, and then I'm still continuing to reread Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is the fourth book in the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. I'm rereading it along with Harry Potter and the Sa Sacred Text podcast and Swish and Flick and All Potter podcast. So um, Swish and Flick did their second half of the Death Eaters chapter podcast this week. So I've listened to that. So now I am ready for the next chapter. Don't know what it's called, but I will let you know. Um, I am almost done rereading The Fiery Cross, which is the fifth book in the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. Cute. Um, and I'm rereading that to help with designing my next Outlander pattern for season five. And, um, I'm going to be working with Julia of Pandy's Jewels again for that. And it is going to be a sock pattern. So, um, she is going to be working on the yarn and get it to me and then I will get the pattern designed. Um, I finished reading The Pawful Truth, which was book number 11 in the Cats in the Stack series by Miranda James. This next book, American Royals. It's the first book in the series by Catherine McGee. You guys, I spent three hours in the bathtub in cold water. My water got, bath water got cold reading this book. Because, oh my gosh, was it, was it good? So it is a YA book, but the, which I love YA books. I read lots of them. Uh, so the premise of this is what it would look like if America had become a monarchy instead of a democracy. So George Washington would be the first king and it's passing down the line and um, they are about to have their first 
queen through the line, not by marriage. And, uh, of course, they're trying to marry her off to a prince and things like that. It is so good. And can I tell you how disappointed I was when <clears throat> I finished the book and I was like, I know there's a sequel. I wonder if I can get it. And I went to look only to realize the book had only been published like nine days ago and the sequel was not coming out till autumn 2020. <sighs> it was really good. It's tragic. Really good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You should check it out. And then I'm reading, I'm back to reading the In Death series by J.D. Robb. So, it, in a weird something other or other, I couldn't get my hands on the next book from our library in physical form. I can only get it as part of a, I believe there's four book ebook through um, Libby, which is, it's still our library, but it's the digital part of it. And there was, so there was this four book ebook with, I think books, it must be 21, 22, 23, and 24. But there was a massive wait for it. So I've been waiting for like eight or 10 weeks for it. So, I got here, so I'm reading those. I finished reading book 21, and I'm in book 22 right now. And that's everything I'm reading, watching. I watched uh, one Hallmark movie this week called Mystery 101, Dead Talk, and that was enjoyable. I finished the most current season, season six of Younger. Everybody knows her secret now. Oh, no. And they are trying to adjust to new things. And he proposed to her, but she didn't get to answer. Who? Um, Charles proposed to Liza. Mm -mm. So that was kind of part of our cliffhanger. Um, so because I finished that, I needed a new show. So I started watching. I don't know how I had never heard the show before. It is a BBC show with like 23 series of it, which is what they call seasons over there. Uh, if you're not to confuse you, if, if you're new, we lived in Scotland for four years. And so you will hear me sometimes refer to things as different words, like instead of apartment flat or, uh, queue instead of line or whatever. Uh, so it has like 23 series and it's still in the air. How have I never heard of this? But the really cool thing is Amazon prime has all, but the, I think most, two most current series uh included with your amazon prime membership so i started watching that uh i finished series one the way they did series one it was four like hour and a half long episodes i believe it was four but then starting in series two they broke it up into two episodes so it's like eight 45 minute episodes mm -hmm. so um i will be starting on series two of that it is kind of like and it's so funny because series one this is all back like in the 90s and um it's just funny it's really really funny uh how how 90s things are but it's kind of like a pager csi but in the uk and not quite as bloody <laughs> so more drama yeah more drama of it so um yeah I'm actually going to be really interested in how many British actors have at least been on it once. Mm -hmm. Because it seems like one of those shows, like over here, like uh, Law, and Order. Law and Order. All of the Law and Orders. You know. You have to be in at least two. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And then uh, we're still watching series four of Father Brown and enjoying that. I'm watching season one of When, Ca when Hope Calls, which is a spinoff of When Calls the Heart from Hallmark. Um, watching season four of Chesapeake Shores, which is also a Hallmark show. Mm -hmm. I'm watching series, well, the, Dr. Hubs and I are watching series 13 of Murdoch Mysteries. And, um, Julia, a family did not want her operating on their loved one. And then it, uh, the, the guy who did operate on this person accidentally nicked the aorta and the person died and um, 
And then, so there, then there's like this emotion from the doctor who accidentally killed this person. But also the family is like, oh, maybe we should have let her do the surgery. Or, you know, just things that happen like that when we lose a loved one unexpectedly. Um, so there was that, they were around that. Um, and they hired a new special constable. Because you have to think of the times. They wouldn't, the powers that be would not have hired a black man to be a mm -hmm. constable. And he, he is a former Pinkerton. And he actually helped with the case that was going on in this episode. And um, the uh, inspector and Murdoch decided to hire him on as a special constable. So, it'll be interesting to have that new voice. A new bruh. In the, in the show. Okay, I started watching season one of Prodigal Son. I think I might have mentioned this last week. Um, you so, said you were excited for it. I am excited for it. it and it is good. It was The first episode was really good. So, it's got Michael Sheen in it. And the premise is, Michael Sheen's character is, is a serial killer called The Surgeon. And he's in prison. Don't give him names. Um, well, he oh is gosh. a surgeon. I know, but you know... The, yeah, yeah. I watch Criminal Minds. I know. Okay. He, he's <laughs> been in prison for like 20 or years or something. I know. So times are different now. Okay. But um, his son is a profiler for the FBI and then gets fired. And then... Then actually, so... The police officer who came to the guy's house trying to, because there had been a, okay, there had been a phone call to the police and it was traced back to their house. And so this police officer goes to check on it and they're like, oh no, we didn't make that call. We don't know what, who could have made it. And the surgeon was about to the way he killed his victims was he put like a tranquilizer in like their tea or coffee and then to, to incapacitate them and then killed them. And he was baking, I think it was tea, maybe coffee. I don't know. To give to this police officer when this like eight year old son came down and said, you need to, you need to pull your gun. He's trying to kill you. And so now then like 20 years later, He's the son has wow. had this this relationship with this police officer played by Lou Diamond Phillips, and uh, he pulls in the guy, the kid, to help with a case, and so it looks like he's like he's going to be working with them now, but he has his own demons and mental health issues and such uh, that caused what happened that he got fired from the FBI, mm -hmm. so. Okay, that was all much too long of a description. Uh, NCIS, season 17, Ziva! Ziva. And Gibbs, and... They're, they're almost got killed, and now um, McGee and Bishop. Bishop and Nick and the director and... The woman who, I can't never remember her name, who is the, like, psychologist kind of role mm -hmm. or whatever. They now all know that Ziva's alive. Da -da -da. Um, and then it was a cliffhanger. Da -da -da. And so I went and watched the promo for the second part next for next week. And I'm like, wait a minute. How the crap did we get to that from where you left the cliffhanger? Mm -hmm. it, I, so I was very confused. Which states, you know, that's what they do. They put up these promos with these just, like, dramatic things and, like, it may not be anything at all once you have it in context. So we will see what happens with Ziva. And then season six of NCIS New Orleans started no. up. Um, and he is now back to being in charge of the team instead of his higher role that he was promoted to. Which he's happy about because he is most happy in that position. So, of course. 
Okay, and then, of course, listening continually to the My Favorite Murder podcast um, and Town OBCR. And that's uh, probably about it other than, than, like, false tubes and such. What are you listening to? Uh, I forget what's in there, even though it's the same thing every time. Cabin Pressure and My Fair Lady. The Revival Cast Recording. Yes. Alrighty. Well, let's move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal owl. Yay, autumn. So this is an owl, this is an along, a make along that runs through the 1st of September from the 1st of September through the 30th of November. And it is for any project that you can knit, crochet, weave, spin, stitch, or sew that you can convince us is related to autumn. So, um, we had some questions this week because we said we were opening this up last week to uh, stitching and sewing. And so, of course, cross-stitch embroidery, sewing, clothes, uh, quilts, project bags, whatever. But also we are including um punch needle and latch hook as approved crafts for this and if you are not a knit crochet weave if you don't knit crochet weave or spin um we do our alongs on ravelry and so if you go back and watch last week's episode i give you a tutorial on how to post your finished projects uh on our ravelry group so but i wanted to throw that in punch needle and latch hook. Nice. So there are a couple main rules for this long. The first is that no whips are allowed. Your project must have been begun no earlier than the 1st of September, then it finished no later than the 30th of November. The other main rule is that each project that you knit, crochet, weave, or spin must be at least 20 yards. Um, but if your project is not at least 20 yards, you need to group it in a single post with other projects that together total 20 yards for stitching and sewing projects and the like we'll leave it to your best judgment but if you want our official ruling you can pm job a pearl on ravelry or email us at geeky girls knit at gmail.com i can yes. never pronounce the k sound geeky i know why did we pick such a difficult name to say for our podcast geeky 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 okay you can feel free to poly dip and other make-alongs as long as it fits in with other rules that's totally fine I saw movement behind my computer and forgot Pink was laying there, and it was her paw moving. You thought moving. it was a little demon? I was like, Well, I mean, what? it is a little demon. I was like, what is moving behind my computer? Uh, as long as it fits in with other roles, that's totally fine. We've got lots of lovely prizes on our screen right now. Thank you so much to our prize donors. If you'd like to get a closer look at our projects, you can visit our show notes at geekygirlsknit.com. Dot com, or tune into the first podcast of every month where we talk about them in detail. If you'd like to donate. If you'd like to donate a prize, you can PM Java Pearl on Ravelry or email us at geekygirlsknit at gmail.com. Yes. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast group on Ravelry to participate. There is a hashtag if you'd like to post on social media or tag your Ravelry projects. It's GGK Autumn 19. The FO thread is going to be locked on the morning of the 1st of December, and winners will be drawn for the next podcast after that. And any winners will have 30 days to claim their prize, or they forfeit it. There's also a chatter thread on Ravelry where you can discuss the progress of your projects and where I give shout outs to people who finish projects, but I also do that here. So this week we have DJID, Falling Star 12, Philippa MC, Jin Park 248, Joe Dadaya, Carlene Page, Knit Central, Knit Live Love, Lil Angel SG2, Elle McCall, Lil Mermaid, Mary Beth 1199, Restrauss, Share 2014, Silver Luna 2112, and Yell Cat 2. It was, it was really nice to see um, Geeky. sewing and projects and such in the, um, in the FF thread this week. Mm -hmm. That was lovely. Your, your little trash can. My little trash can. You mean my collapsible thread catcher? You said it was a little trash can. It is a little trash can. Mm -hmm. There you go. I don't have to use any more of that color. Wait, oh, well, I might. Wait. Give it back. Okay, we're ready. I forgot that stitching was a thing. We're ready to move on, I think, to the next segment.
And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we try to answer them. This one is from Carrie, who, or possibly Kari, who is Earl Grey Knitter 2 from Kansas. I think it's Carrie. Cece, I got my nose pierced not too long ago. How long did it take for your nose piercing to heal? Also, where do you shop for jewelry for your nose? The <laughs> That's just this funny sentence. The pink hoop you wear sometimes looks awesome. Okay. I could not honestly tell you how long it took my nose piercing to heal. Because it was like over 10 years ago, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, more than 10 years ago. I think I got it for my 30th birthday. <laughs> and I'm about to turn 42. So 12 years ago. Um, yeah, just make sure you're cleaning it like they tell you and and everything. And, um, and gosh, I think there are products now 12 years later that help healing faster than yeah. you know when I had it done the this pink ring that I wear 99.9% .9 of the time now uh, it's like actually made out of like silicone but it's hard um, I got it on Etsy from a UK seller umpteen years ago but I'm sure there's other ones on Etsy just search you know silicone nose ring and this one is one where you put it in from the inside out and it's got so you can see like there, there's there's a little ending piece to it so it's not a full hoop so it, that little ending piece holds it tight against the inside of the nose so and I mean I have other nose rings but honestly I wear this like 99.9% .9 of the time um, because it doesn't that there's other things that I have worn in the past where I would accidentally bump it or catch it, like especially at night um, or whatever, and yank on it accidentally because there was something that stood out that was enough to catch on um, where I don't have that problem with this. Um, yeah, and I just keep it clean by when I wash my face every day. And it's, I've had it in there forever. I kind of would like to maybe see if I can find one that's like more this brighter pink of like of my hair mm -hmm. versus like the paler pink of my shirt. I'll have to look. Etsy, where are you? Um, so yeah. I think I answered all the questions to the best of my abilities. Yep. Oh my gosh, what is going on with my thread? I thought she was saying, oh my gosh, about my nose ring. Um, you talked about getting one, but you don't want to at this point because of theater. Yeah. Um, like if you wanted to get one, probably the best time there, to... There are clear stoppers in it. Well, there is, there are clear stoppers, but I was, what I was going to say is if you want to get one, the best time to do it would probably be like at the beginning of the summer so it can heal because you can't put in the clear stopper until after it heals. I only pulled one strand through to undo my thing. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Um, so that would probably be the best option would be like, if you want to have it done, do it at the beginning of next summer. So it has time to heal so that you can be able to change it and put the clear stopper in when you get yeah. back to school. Well, it's also like, I want a tattoo and then I didn't do anything this summer. What kind of tattoo are you thinking? In Latin. What is it going to say? Ad astra per aspera. And what does that mean? To, to the stars through adversity. And what is that from? So... Just a Latin quote. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh dear, we're having tragic moments here. I think, uh, did you tell them what to do if, if they no. have a question? If you have a question, go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. That's right. Uh, and we'll answer it usually in the order that it comes in unless it's a time sensitive one. All right, you can ask us anything. We'll answer it. Okay, on to the next segment. You guys made it into the show. Yay. Good grief. I felt like we were like all over the world today. More like probably the universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, a reminder of the announcement we talked about earlier. Uh, next week's episode is going to be a mini episode that we'll record on Friday. And it will go live Friday evening at the latest. Um, since we're leaving for Vancouver Saturday morning early. Um, and then the following week... Danny will be home and we'll record on Friday and it'll go live on Saturday. And then all the episodes after that for at least this 
quarter of school, I will be going to Seattle and recording with her on Fridays, and then the episodes will go live on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So we're shifting things by a day because of her school schedule, but we're recording in person, which I am so excited about. Mm. It also means I get to see Dammy every week. You gotta bring me coffee. Uh, I thought you were going to say you need to bring me the cat. <laughs> oh, I've got to figure out how feeding her when I'm gone oh, all day. Oh, dear. That's what happened. Oh. Did it tear? Um, it just came apart. It's okay. We will figure it out after the podcast is over. I can, I can figure it right. Um, so, stay tuned for episodes on Saturdays after next week. Um, do we have any other announcements, Sammy? No. All right. Uh, we'd like to say a big thank you to those of you who support the podcast, especially those who support us financially. Big hearts. It does cost money, unfortunately, to the podcast. Shipping of prizes is a big one. Technology, etc. Um, there are three main, main ways to support the podcast if you want to do it financially. Uh, the main one is Patreon, which is a site where you pledge a certain amount a month to your favorite creatives. You earn rewards based on the level you donate at. Um, if you are interested in knowing more about it or signing up, where do they go? Patreon.com slash geeky girls net. Geeky. Geeky. Uh, what's another way? There's a PayPal button in the sidebar of our website if you would like to make a one-time donation. And we are Amazon.com.co.uk and .ca affiliates. If you go to our website and in the sidebar, as well as at the bottom of each uh, show notes post, there are images and links. Click on the appropriate one for your country's Amazon. Uh, if you are in another country besides those three and shop regularly and want to do that, let me know because I can sign us up for other uh, countries. Mm -hmm. I just have it because these are the three main. Um, and so you click on the link or the, the image. Do your shopping as normal. Uh, Amazon will give us a little money back based on what you purchase. Doesn't cost you anything extra. It's a great way to support the podcast by doing something you'd be doing anyway. Yay, holiday shopping's coming up. Mm -hmm. Great time to do that. Um, okay, Dammy, where can they find us online? You can find us. Hold on, I'm straightening this back out. At geekygirlsknit.com. There, there are links to everywhere else you can find us online. YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, it's I, the iTunes, it's I, everywhere. Now, now I've confused myself. Yes. Everywhere. Um, okay. Well, we hope you have a lovely rest of your week. Um, we are loving that it is really, really starting to feel like autumn. I'm wearing a long sleeve guard again. Ow, I poked myself. I'm hoping that it's going to be cool enough to take my pom pom pop shawl with me Yay. to Vancouver next week to wear. Beginning to feel a lot like autumn. Um, so, we hope you have a lovely rest of your week. I already said that. Mm -hmm. Happy crafting, and we'll be back with you next week for a mini episode before we go to Vancouver. All right. Bye. Squatches oh. and then uh, we're we'll back the belly. Like laying in the sun. Oh, yeah, it's fun to lay in the sun, isn't it? You get all warm. The sun's gonna go away soon. Oh, oh, okay.